Lee Bofkin. Doctor. Dr. Lee. Who's, he was at Oxford and Cambridge. We've never had that before. And it's all about murals. We've talked about murals for ages. We've been trying to get him. So, yeah, I just... I have, there's about a million and one questions when I ask him, but we we've got to keep on track because we won't have much time. But I think... I think he talks quite fast. Good. So we better get so it all in. If you're if you're listening to this podcast, you can listen at half speed, speed. if you want. Yeah, we, it's uh, not a bad show. Um, I'll tell you what, we're talking about murals though. So one of the things I did notice last week in New York, um, but Brooklyn is obviously completely peppered with murals, but now more so in Manhattan, lots more mural sites popping right. up in Manhattan. Interesting. Um, and, you know, we've talked about um, Kelly before from from Colossal Media, who are a, a mural company in the US. Um, so uh, Kelly, if you're listening, we're, you're you're next. Um, yep. After we've uh, we've got Dr. Lee today, so we're going to have to go stateside. And I think on the mural away. front, we could probably get you know mur- mural special one, two, and three. Lee sounds like he's a bit an authority on it, and he has been. I mean, the, certainly the, here in Europe for sure. Yeah, the, his portfolio work is amazing. So I think it's going to be fascinating. Um, and yeah, I'm just really, really looking forward to it. I think I can see him jumping around outside. Has he got orange spectacles on? He's got an orange t-shirt and orange And a pair of shorts. Look, let's go and get him. He's clambering to get (laughs) him. He starts painting the walls. Lee Bofkin, uh, co-founder and CEO of Global Street Art. Welcome to Behind the Billboard. Good morning. It's lovely to be here. Welcome. Thank Thank you you. for coming on. Uh, It's nice to have Dan back from New York. Um, So uh, we've been wanting to do this forever. Um, so thanks for your patience because I know we've been toing and throwing a bit about getting you on. And we do this sure. thing after after we record every episode. We go right. What, what are we doing next? What who have we got in next? We, right. we, we must get the murals. Must do the murals. Right. Must, where's Lee? We have and we. I oh, know we had to postpone yeah. one for work reasons. But yeah. We, uh, and then with every week that it gets delayed, I do more research, and Dan <laughs> goes off and does another big job somewhere else. There are ninety five slides. Research in our you've put in is astounding. <laughs> it's, that's you six know months. so much about me. It's frightening. <laughs> yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm looking at things in there, like photos of me in this deck, where like I'm younger, I'm healthier, I'm happier. I like it's the best version of me. Michael Aspel was about to walk in with the red book. <laughs> this is your life. <laughs> That's not a bad idea. <laughs> yeah, well, I do feel like I've got to know you. And um, yeah, you're quite, you're, I mean, so you're, you're a fascinating character, if you don't mind me saying. And someone who we definitely are super chuffed to have on because murals is a massive thing in the outdoor space. Mm. And it seems to be growing. So without blowing too much um, smoke up your bum straight away, we needed someone who could encompass not just what's out there now but also what are the processes mm. you know tell us about the industry so, so we're really really pleased you're on um and it, it means a big difference to us so um thank you i think the main question is um how are you and what walls have you been painting lately what's going on at global street art what's uh, the thing? I'm great. Thank you for having me. I'm deeply, more than anything, grateful to be here. Um, you guys are seasoned pros and have interviewed many esteemed people. So for us to be able to come in and talk about murals and painting is a really lovely thing. I think, um, you know, that you said murals are massive. Well, physically, we paint massive yeah. things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are as busy as we could be. We're always striving for the next thing. This week, we've got some really fun projects going on for uh, MailChimp, Diablo. This goes out later, so that embargo has gone by then. Uh, and then just other things that have happened recently. You'll have seen kind of Tinder and just lots of things. We're doing a really cool one for Wedgwood today right. as well. Who would have thought that? Wedgwood. But I don't think that our industry is is massive, really. We're 30 people full time, plus our retained artists take us to about the equivalent of 50 people. We're the biggest in the UK and I dare right. say sort right. of Europe, well, hands down by a country mile. But I don't think... It's anywhere near... I wouldn't say we're massive. I think there's definitely space for growth and in different ways. So it's an exciting time to be involved in it. And I think in some respects, we were lucky that because I've got a passion and a background in kind of hip-hop culture, really, that I knew graffiti a bit earlier and I was photographing street art before we discovered this agency model. And that meant that I was sort of splashing around in the water with the support of our my co-founder mm. when a wave kind of came along. But I still think there's a lot of, of but potential. It, I mean, is that... That's that's part of starting your own business, right? That's right. You follow your passion. You've got a passion for something and you you can follow that passion and you're you're certainly leading the way in the out of home industry in, mm. in this country, mm. um, for from everything that we've seen. And you know, I know our agencies have worked together, but it's you know, from from the stuff that I see on our feeds and out on the streets. 
uh, Global Street are, are, are definitely pushing the boundaries of what's possible and where it's possible, which is, is fantastic for it, our out-of-home industry. It's really lovely to hear that. And so many of our team don't come from an out-of-home background and we don't necessarily like see or hear that. And we'll talk about some of the awards that we've won, but most of them we didn't enter. Mm. Someone else has entered and we were associated in part of that campaign and helped execute because for years we didn't really speak about what we were doing. We just focused on what we call now operational ele- excellence. So just making sure that the client experience from one end to the other is as good as it can be. And you need to build that trust when you've got a product that is craft, is hand, is hand painted. Yeah. So that trust and building that is really important. And that's what we've worked on for years and years. So we've not really, this. I've never done a podcast related to advertising mm. in any way, shape or form, let alone outdoor no, the, advertising. The, the, the irony has been, re, we've been reminded of the irony of our podcast talking about a visual medium mm. many a time. <laughs> yeah. Alfred, shout out. To I you, think please. it's... um. It's really apparent that well, it's it's not a surprise you you're you're doing so well because like Dan just said, you know, it's really you can feel your passion for it. It's, mm. it's not it's not a oh that's a that's a bandwagon I need to jump on. Yeah, you know, I love you, my job. Yeah, exactly. And uh, I was fascinated reading about your background a bit about how did you go? So you went to Oxford and Cambridge. Yeah universities so that's mm. a first for us on the show never had that before and then you went from there to being a skateboarder and a break dancer and now you're part of this you know large global company can you surmise that first in a few a so, so more or less right so my undergraduate degree was biology i did really well uh, and then i got offered to do a doctorate at cambridge in something similar mathematical models of dna evolution because i used to have maths as part of what i was okay at but i used to break dance for the uk so i never skateboarded but at that time i, I was that's right but i was hanging around with a lot of b-boys still do they still train in our office once twice a week my old crew we've stayed friends for years and years uh, and then I got injured around 2005, hurt my knee, started photographing graffiti, ended up taking 50,000 photos in 25 countries, wow. classified that archive to make a Getty Images type database for street art and graffiti. But the licensing, the rules were really difficult. So we had this grand front door to a tiny cupboard. There wasn't really a business in it, but we had an archive and a passion. And then that went online and we started building up the online community. And funnily enough, we still got a big online following now. We don't talk about it that much. Right, There's 350,000 right. followers on Instagram, Facebook does really well for us. In total, our audience is more than half a million across different channels. We were building that up before we knew about painting. The first mural that we painted commercially was for EasyJet's in-flight magazine. Uh, Oh gosh, seven, eight years ago or something like that, really early on in the story. And a friend of mine was editor at the magazine. He said, we want 12 art front covers for the year. One of them, we want it to look like you're walking from a a car park into a beach scene. Can you paint a beach on a wall? And we tried gallery shows and things before that. And I said, you know what? I know a great artist who can do this. I'm friends with a landlord because we've been painting and supporting pure art, Mm -hmm. non-commercial art, which is how we really started for a very long time. So all the components, we had them. And then the penny dropped, we were an agency. And we obviously <laughs> undercharged for the mural, uh, but made more in a day than we did from the gallery so shows. What, in uh, this is good because actually you've already now ticked off one of our sections uh, two beats down. But yeah. if that was your f- first mural, what was it again? It was a beach scene. I'm walking so it, towards it. Was it was actually, it was an AR mural. It was the first AR thing when Blipper right. was there. It, it would just look like a beach. A person in a deck chair sitting on a beach with right. sand around the wall that didn't look great because it was builder's sand. It was the wrong colour. <laughs> But we ignored that and Good took effort. photos without. But it was, you know, marks for effort. We, we always look back at our own work and <laughs> critique it, though, don't we? That's yeah. the, at the time, you're like, great, this is sand, our first. Get sand, get some sand. Yeah, get some sand. Yeah, yeah, get some sand. Oh, I've had some done. creatively atrocious ideas. But they're some of the fun ones, but the elements of that come yeah. back later and they can maybe be useful. So, yeah, it was that long ago. It was easy as in Flight Magazine. It just... So, wait, the, did them, you... Can I jump in? Yeah. So, did you and are you a painter yourself or are you like a person who um you know cl- you know uh, uh, gets the yeah, right yeah i, I can't right decide the puzzle. i can't decide what i am so my technical title was CEO and janitor. I used to paint and buff, like literally emulsion most of the walls at the early stage because oh, I was did. the labor. Okay, you did. So I'm qualified on scissor lifts and cherry pickers, but I'm not a talented <laughs> artist. I took up calligraphy five years ago and ended up doing like little bits for Madonna when she did stuff on tour. So I write calligraphy, but I'm not an artist right. in any way, shape okay. or form. So, but if someone said, shit, Lee, um, someone's gone ill, we need you to come up. No, that would that would be, you've gone through a scaling up type process and you've not sorted your delegation and there's a hole that you're having to jump in to fill right. that 
instigate some conversation. So you could then go and get can. another artist or someone else to... We're, we've got an amazing artistic community around us. We do everything from artistic events to host residencies and do lots of stuff that's not just painting amazing murals. So because of that, we give back to our community a lot. We work with our community a lot. Right. We're just around friends that want to see something work. And the kind of work that we've been able to provide has taken, has, has given like a, a, a really good career path for yeah. a lot of amazing artists who might not have had a big outdoor painting career unfold for them as easily as if we yeah. hadn't been there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that is that's, in itself that's is fantastic. plenty of motivation. Yeah, that's great. That's, mm. that's exactly what you want. If you, you know, You're offering a career uh, and a financial path to people who are doing this on the side as their passion project and they're, you're, you're, you're providing them with an income. Culture and artists are so under-resourced mm. across the world really that, you know, part of the thesis when we started Global Street Arts, you had a city that wanted to be painted, artists that wanted to paint it and we were just getting really good at navigating the brokering the conversation with landlords in the middle. Yeah. But if our conversation for the effort of half an hour made it easy for an artist to paint something for a day or two that was going to look good three years later in a housing estate, it's a multiplier. Yeah. So, you know, there are quite a few things that we've latched onto or invested in or thought through where culturally they're multipliers or flywheels mm. that you can have an outsized impact by adding resource in a certain area where other people have sort of overlooked it and I love us as a company for a counter to like well, there's so much conversation around AI if we touch on it or not it's going to change the industry anyway but we set up to be a human component to talk about appreciation and human craft and human skill and I think that's even more relevant in a narrative that can be digitally uh, contributed to so much by AI. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think you're I right. mean, perversely, that's why I sort of love murals because mm. they're not part of all of that. I'm a bit old school, I suppose, in a certain way. I just love the outdoor and work which just stops you. I don't particularly want to pick up my phone and get any of that shit involved. I just want to sit there and be wowed. Like I went to Paris recently, mm. uh, took my wife for lunch there, you're welcome, Rachel. And um, we wandered around and just suddenly came around a corner and there's this incredible, I wasn't even a mural, it was a kind of like a, a statue of the uh, the Japanese artist who does the dots. The, yo yo the Kasama. Yeah, and then she, it was like she'd been splashing yeah. the paint, the, uh, the, ha the building opposite. And I went, fucking hell, that's cool. I didn't even know it was there, you know. And then I went around another corner in Paris and there's like all dirty little kind of things. About it's, it's kind of the it's fun like, of... of Street art, isn't it? Exactly. Is, is finding it. Yeah, and discovering it feels like part of your own rather than you know, going off on a massive tangent here. But you know, like, you know, billboards. Oh, yeah, there's, I can see a billboard. It's, coming a, frame. it's a frame. I'm used to, I know that Someone's there's always going to be a new it. advert there every yeah. two weeks, yeah. every three exactly. weeks. Exactly. I mean, I, I sent you yesterday, or well, I think we were talking, actually, we, this is how we can get onto our next bit. All right. The bill, the mural at the end of my street. So um, we always ask people about the billboard at the end of their street. So I was thinking, oh, yeah, right, we should ask Lee about the mural at the end of the street, thinking, oh, there won't be. And then I walked around my neighbourhood the other day. There's three a really mm. fucking cool ones. There's a massive pair of eyes. There's Bugs Bunny having a coffee. Is there one of the Arsenal team shitting the bed as they... <laughs> Let's keep it professional. So, you know what I mean? Five minutes. Football. Yeah. Football alive. Yeah. Wait, just alert everyone. Lee doesn't. Lee is not interested in football. Not, I wouldn't it. say I'm not interested. No, I'm he's not. Just not as sad as me and Dan. <laughs> Let's go for that. That's yeah. a very kind um, way. So, but joking aside, so what is uh, Lee? What is the mural at the end of your street? Uh, he raised a whole bunch of questions immediately. <laughs> like we're talking about colour in public space and, and billboards within public space, which is a tangent we won't get into today. The one I sent you in answer to that question is one just outside our office right now on Tabernacle Street, which is an absolute mammoth HPA, hand-painted advertising, commercial mural for the game Diablo. And it's all the good things artwork should be for out of home. It's super high impact. It works really well under pixel pressure if you take a photo and share it. But it's just did a giant... Did you say pixel pressure? I did say pixel pressure. I fucking love that. Yeah, someone told me that recently and I've kept it. What's now that now the face is in. So, it, yeah, thanks. Go slow that. Pixel pressure means what? You've got to be... You're, well, You've so much communication is digital. A lot of that is on a mobile phone. You have a small amount of real estate that people scroll through quickly to try and catch attention in a limited device. That's pixel pressure. Thank you. Mm. So if the mural is going to be shared on social media, it needs to work as a design essentially around the same size as a matchbox label. So one of the things we think about and talk about 
in-house is when we're designing, would it work as a matchbox label? And unsurprisingly, within the fact that we've got a, a really wonderful archive that sits behind a lot of what we do, that's a seed of future creativity and future ideas, includes things like matchbox labels. Okay. And we take inspiration Brilliant. from Brilliant. past human creativity to help expand that well, forward. So a giant demon walking through a wall works really it's well. It's really yeah. interesting to say that. Dave Dye on LinkedIn wrote a piece the other day after doing a Vicky Ross uh, copy Safari Walk. They didn't see one decent poster mm. in the whole of their walk. And he actually said, so I'm going to get to the point, which was like, actually, every poster should work as a thumbnail. Yeah. And if it doesn't, you're fucked. And it, so what you've just said there is virtually the mirror to that. It's it's a, a match a matchbox. And the fact that Isn't you it? think about that as part of your... Um, the You're designing these massive wallscapes. The fact that you th you're thinking about... The, How small the, it can be. Well, the, the vi social viability of something mm. in order to help the return on investment for a client who's buying this massive wall and spending the time on hand painting. I think a lot of people in advertising talk about cut through and this idea that you're going yeah. to get cut through. But if you read Jack Reese and Al Trout's old book, Positioning, we say we actually talk more about a fog of advertising where you exist yeah. within a sphere and you're not really right. going to get cut through. A lot of advertising serves just behaviorally to prime people to make a purchase because it's easier to recall yeah. Coca Cola when you're at point of sale than it is the other brand. So there is that mass media. But to create that moment, that emotional connection and that response, given how many things we're exposed to a day, very high amounts of craft and skill that themselves make you stop and look, how has that been painted? How has that been done? Reinforces the message. And behind. anything physical does tend to do better in that realm, doesn't mm. it? So the so, fact that this is in the real world and it's something that has got craft to it is yeah. physical and what's, thing. What's for, sorry, I'm going to ask this later on, but I'm going to jump in now, is that I, know, I think I know the answer to this, but you go, the key to a great mural is simplicity, right? But it kind of put an addendum to the question is that, but if it's murals by the nature, you stand in front of them and go, oh, what kind of paint? I do get a captive audience. So then actually, can you throw in a few more messages, which seems to be at odds with the whole matchbox thing? Right. So you what said you the, the key to a great mural is simplicity. I don't agree necessarily. I think the key to a great mural or any great piece of outdoor advertising or any great piece of advertising is audience. So if you're appealing to Where's Wally, which we painted recently, <laughs> one giant Where's Wally doesn't satisfy that brief. But if you paint a hundred characters, which we did, which really isn't simplicity, in order to get right. people who are fans, the audience, to stand there and find mm. Wally in a really complicated mural, it works brilliantly. Where, where, and then it's shareable. This isn't a joke. Where, where was, was Wally? Where, where was, was Wally? He was Wally? everywhere. That was the point of the campaign. No, um, he was. This was at Village Underground on Hollywell Lane in Shoreditch. We, look, I mentioned, we're media owners before. We have a hundred of our own sites around the country. That includes a lot of spaces in and around Shoreditch. So the largest and most famous murals, including Village Underground Wall, is one of our stock, essentially one of our walls. It looked amazing when we painted it for Where's Wally. Right now, I think that has had, just had Jack Daniels on it, and that's going to Wedgwood today. Okay, so take a breath. So wait a minute, we've now done the thing at the end of my street and your first billboard, so we're already mm. flying. I mean, <laughs> I wanted to ask another question just while you're there, because an excuse, we're going to sort of go back a tiny beat to um, simple questions about your industry as opposed Please. to Global Street. Great. So um, one of the things I was going to ask is, why do I do, <clears throat> excuse me, why a mural versus a billboard? Is there a reason and does a does a mural work in a different way? So there's three ways or three stats that people usually reference when they're talking about the impact of outdoor. One of them is something like opportunities to see and the number of people see it. So the location of your wall becomes really, impop really popular. The other things that people measure as metrics that show some of the impact or some of the relevance include things like dwell time. The stats we've got, the dwell time for murals is great, but then also the emotional intensity, like essentially the system one response. Mm. So there are people out there that measure people's responses to adverts and murals score highly, and I think higher than other large format outdoor mediums that I've seen that we've seen. We're working through the stats on that, right? But, but how can you tell? What, you're hiding a camera in the wall? There are things like that. Right, yeah, okay. absolutely. I mean, I, I don't you, can, you can have eye tracking software and cameras that okay. do, do like literally track dwell time that you attach to a wall. We Look, because we've come from an industry that wasn't very formalised, yeah, yeah, we've yeah. sought to professionalise a lot of the processes and essentially provide an end-to-end -end service because I don't feel that we're 
quote unquote, selling murals or paint, the client experience runs end to end. So from the first time someone makes an inquiry to being handheld through a relatively complicated medium, to being given great design advice, if asked for, if wanted, and really good digital content that we capture in-house as well, that whole experience is really important. And with that and understanding our medium, we saw recently to gain statistics or numbers that back up what we feel we know. And that result, I think they call it something like, Richard Bond talks about it quite a lot as well. It's like different forms of advertising. Rory Sutherland talked about it. There's one mm. which is your short term, your your quick stuff, your quick sale. And then there's the brand building stuff. We fall in that brand building category yeah, yeah, yeah. where if I ask you two years from now, you've seen Diablo in person, do you remember it? You will say yes. You will remember that mural because it's bloody amazing. But that's why two I kind years of, later. But that's one. <coughs> excuse me. Stuart, go on. Before we move on from the from the stats, am I right in thinking that some of your fixed locations now you've got onto Root? Root. Yeah. Just so for everyone to know, is the kind of industry standard for audience metrics for out of home sites. Yeah. Um. And I th- I think you guys are the first. We are the first wall mural company. Provider. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so okay. we have like 60, 70 sites on Root with another bunch going in. And this anyway. is really important for the industry, for the people who are buying this space and then thinking about creating for this space because if it's going to provide you with more opportunity to have that media sold, which means there's more opportunity for creatives to be thinking about those walls. So I think that's a... That's something I thought... I was thinking either last night or morning, I can't remember. And again, as a sort of simple creative, is there a mural media register? So say I'm going, could there be a moment where I go, right, I've got this idea... um, for Waitrose, okay? Sure. And I want I want that wall. I want yep. that one in Shoreditch by the roundabout. Yeah. You know, like in the old... So in the old days, you'd go, fuck, I want a 96 sheet on Cromwell Road. Yeah. It, how do those walls become available? Do you, you, do you literally buy... That's what I mean yeah, about yeah, roofs. Yeah. But, so, 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 but so. then also, if I've got a house and I'm lucky, or a building, luckily enough to be in a high dwell, am I suddenly sitting on a gold mine? Or not. If he wants to sell, if, if he that wants to space, sell the facade of his if house. That space, <laughs> if that space is good for outdoor, it's been door knocked before. Door knocked, right. Yeah. There are so many site developers working for Deco and Global and whose whose job it is to look for and the whole industry, whose job it is to look for sites that are suitable for outdoor. So tell me tell me the process. I'm in Brighton. Sure. There's that one that they put Oatly on the side of, which was a bit controversial. But yeah. so there's someone what, they literally knock on the door and say, can I buy your wall? I always find it funny that sometimes, yeah, more or less. I mean, there's some technique behind <laughs> it. Why it would be any different? And then we, if I'm selling you my wall, it's the same. How, as, how, it's the how same would it work? If, like, so yeah. The clear channels and decos and the globals will go to a building site and say, "Can I stick a okay. sheet up?" Or, in or if an artist space, goes yeah. to the landlord, "Hey, I want to yeah. paint my yeah, art yeah, on yeah, this." Yeah. So then, but if I'm savvy, yeah, do I go, "Yeah, Gov, you can buy it." Um, outright, or you can give me a retainer, or yeah, I'll charge you this much a week. Do they all? Is it now? A- so there's obviously those negotiations, and each contract is different. So some walls, you know, depending on where the wall is, its traffic, how difficult it is to paint, the neighbour relationships is really challenging. So unlike some outdoor real estate where you're just thinking about the billboard or the wall, we have to access it to be able to paint. Mm. Right. That complexity adds is a huge layer of complexity to add. So right. there are some real challenging parts that need a really experienced, great team that we have to navigate those conversations. All of that, right? Right. So all we have, you know, we're, we're we've got three ISO standards with Chaz approved for health and safety. We've sought to make sure that everyone comes home always. And we're really, that's really important to us as we scale and grow that because it's human that you minimise the risks for everyone. It's really interesting because I can see some work on murals. You go, and this is not being rude, I hope. Mm. You go, oh, I see that's like, uh, it's a Domino's. Domino. Yes. So we had Dave on from VCP and it's a great idea. That was us, by the way. I remember, yeah. yeah. And so you could go, right, well, that's a great poster. And then they they just sort of put it on the side of a building. You go, that's cool. Whereas when I was at Specsavers, I came up with an idea about the football and the World Cup with John and Bertie. We're going to talk about Specsavers in a minute and they're the same team who did the stuff. Yeah. And we said... We should use murals as a medium because that's where football stars and occasions are celebrated. And we went in as the mural was the start Mm. of the conversation, Mm. whereas sometimes it's the other... You know, like some creatives, they go, 
you go, what was the media plan? They go, oh, by the way, they can do it on a mural. Oh, great. You know, yeah. but they don't know about it. Is there is that apparent? So, so you've got different ways that people come to you as potential clients or buyers. Some know the product really well. Some don't. Um, for people that just want to recreate the artwork of the pack shot, it's still hand painted. It still makes content that extends that experience online. So and you still do that as an agency, yeah. Yeah. So you know that's what a cl- client is asking you to do. That it's a reasonable request. You say yes, and you do it gladly. Gladly it. And know. even at that point, do you mm. assign that to a type of artist, or do you have a more of a generic style for those things? So we have internal conversations with our creative departments early on about which amongst the team would be a really good combination of artists to work together on different parts of it. You don't want five people that are amazing at painting faces if you've got one face to paint <laughs> and loads of background foliage, right? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. you know, having those conversations, the, the way our company structure is, is relatively flat, we're scaling, so that does need to change or will change over time. But the conversations we have internally put our artists and our team really close to the creative. So whether wanted or not, we're happy to give feedback saying, actually, the logo is better seen from this side because the road is on this side, et cetera, et cetera. We are being asked to be an active partner. And whether the advice is ignored or not, at least we're up front to say, we think we can help. We have an expertise here and this is what we do. Choose choose it or not. But that's really important, important. isn't it? Because that's what I love about your industry and murals you're going well this one's like a sort of it's a spiky bit at the top and there's a long bit like yesterday i went down to um deptford library don't ask me why it's something to do with a book i'm writing but there was there was a, a side of a building where they'd put a, a pearl necklace round the yeah. um, chimney stack. That's art mongers. F- a friend oh painted that God. years and years ago. It's, it's a really like, famous, lovely, charming mural. This is University Challenge with Lee's special subject <laughs> murals. And then on the side, and the, the, the building went on the side. And I just thought, fucking hell, that's cool. You know, and it was like, so you can go from that very pure, virtually art yeah. to guys, we just want a fucking massive logo, paint it. So you do both, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, you, you, we're here to, look, if we're not here to, within the advertising sphere, if we're not making our clients happy, we're, I don't know what we are. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, the the if you don't look, because of the way we started, we only just started a marketing department very recently and a sales department very late last year. We did basically no outreach for a very long time. Yeah. And if you don't have a sales team, the best advice you could have is just, do your job really well yeah. <laughs> because you need to retain those clients and do it really, really well and operationally be super, super tight on things because you don't have a sales team. And I think so one, it's a necessity. One, one, of, one of the benefits that you've had as well, I think, is uh, and is, it, is still serving you well because I, mean, I know you, you're a supplier to Grand Visual as mm. well. So um, is you almost have... You've got a sales team in pretty much every out of home specialist as well because mm. they are, you know, the out of home specialist, the buyers believe in all outdoor mm. medium. And mm. they, I know they will push certain things over yeah. other things and for yeah. certain reasons, but they, you know, we have a sales team of, of six people here in the UK. Right. And murals are going out on, on, our, on our sales decks yeah. to clients across the board because. We're big believers in what um, and what GSA do. So you, it's going out there because we've, we're having ideas about how to take things to the next level and whatever they can do, you know, creatively is being seen by people. And mm-hmm. I think you've you've got while well, you haven't had your own internal sales team, you've kind of you've you've rode the wave of stuff that you've done very very successfully. Mm. Um, to the point that the out of home specialists and the creatives are thinking about it before your sales team are even outreaching. The job of any agency is to basically try and take as much work away from the planners or the partners yeah. that you're working with. Yeah. Ultimately, in any agency that serves a bigger or bigger clients, we would like you to be, us to be the highlight of your day. Mm. If when you call us, there's enthusiasm because there's passion around the project and we're going to deliver something that the product sells itself in that it looks really good at the end of it, that is the only way to entrench those relationships and and to make sure that we are on the front foot and supporting and finding other ways of supporting our clients beyond what's, you know, what we did last week. Is there a, sorry, it's a slightly, um, I don't know, small question, but slightly, I'm, I'm intrigued. Is there a number one wall at the moment that people ask for? You know, like, because we- Which is the one that sold out- Cause we, so we, there's probably two contenders for that right now. Go on, go on. One please. of them is Tabernacle Street, which we might, we were joking this morning, we should rename the Old old Street Monster or the Shoreditch Monster because it's just enormous. Yeah. And it looks beautiful on social media and video. And it 
you, I was walking, if you walk down Campbell Street out of uh, Old Street Tube, you walk past it and it's really striking. So that one's been asked for a lot. Ever Sun since, comes up nicely over Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, ever, well, so glory shot. I think Bottega Veneta were one of the first on it, if not the first. And then when other fashion brands saw that, and the power of that wall on social, because it's such a huge undertaking mm. to paint. Um, that one has done really well, because um, it just really stops you in your tracks, even though it's not a, it's not on a mass. Sorry, just on that. So you say it's a bit a big undertaking to take. That's another thing I'm really interested in. Yeah. How long does this take? And are, are there shortcuts to it, or do you just have to employ people who have got strong arms? So <laughs> let me let me finish your other question. Sorry, before, yeah, yeah. You I'm said there was another out. wall. There's a wall opposite Shoreditch House, known as Ebor Street, uh, which is asked for as often as, say, Village Underground or Great Eastern Street, those cluster of walls uh, and Ebor Street won't exist to the end of the year. I think it's it's being demolished ultimately. But um, right, okay. But there are some really popular ones that sell in advance. But what we've noticed over the years is the demand has moved out of just Shoreditch to across London to that much more regional and increasingly for us also international. Mm. So that is... Um, we yeah, want that, right? been in, Yeah. Great. So could we surmise and say it is a growth industry. Yes, I think that's fair to say. But I think it's also when we do that, it's the reasons that it's growing are more important than saying it's just growing. And what I I, briefly, what are those again? Have you said those? Have I forgotten? I, I think it's come off a small base. It's still a very small part of the outdoor industry. It's tiny in other parts of Europe or so. And it's really difficult to do. So technically, it's taken time to mature and to grow and to get the elements that allow it to grow. So partly, yes, of course, it's growing, but it's coming from a small base. But what's interesting is the other things that are being added, like special build, UV lighting, projection mapping, AR, VR over the top, where what's really happening is people are saying we want to work with artists or crafts or humans and then these other technology layers to also create content on top of mm. just an amazing piece of outdoor advertising there's, there's clearly some brands so we we did an oatly special didn't we and mm. uh, they are obviously massively invested in murals which we love and the way they treat them with the re irreverence and you know mm. and and low you know hyper localized you know that do you find certain brands are great to work with like that and others are, you know, I suppose you do them all like you said, but it's it must be great fun to work with a really creative brand like that. Are some clients better to work with than others? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, they are. Bleeding yes. the obvious question, yes. sorry. Um, okay, no, but, 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 but the question is really like what works or, or, or what's good in that conversation, right? So where we get to have conversations a little earlier on in the creative time, the results sometimes show that because we've had influence where we're involved in design is obviously a pleasure, um, but early on, conversations with clients about the content they want what they want to use what they want to use the content for what they understand that they're painting a mural for is kind of part of that their narrative so it's it's valuable you asked another question before about how you know long process, arms yeah. long arms process <laughs> so there is a process it does take time most walls we paint between three to five days depending on access method and size of wall but even for most very large walls we try and complete within five days the shortage monster as i've called it tabernacle street we are because the current artwork is so detailed and complicated we've started painting that one a bit earlier but it's not much more than a week but that provides so you with content as well right so sure i've does. seen we've seen a lot of your social feed where you're you're showing people the process and that's part of the the content that's available to clients yeah yeah absolutely so, and also like the you know people see it from day one they walk mm, past it day two and day yeah. three they're interested to see it finish you become invested in it and i always thought about public art generally if you're on a bus on the way to work in the morning you go past a mural and it makes your commute half a percent better we've done a public good i mm. do think with the adverts that we paint some of them diablo being a great example are so striking and so impressive that they can not only stop you in your tracks, but make you have a slightly more cooler morning. Yeah, mm. And that, to, yeah. to come to be able to do that in advertising is really powerful. Because I think when we're all yeah, on You're seeing something come to life. It's part, you're part of the Well, process. I think also it's what Dan and I talk about, you know, the, the, the social accelerator. You know, you might not even see it. But if mm. you see, if you put it up and I see it, I'm going to mm. grab it and send it around because it, I suppose it's your matchbox test. It's the Instagram test. If it's good enough mm. to put on your feed, then that's... That's the test. And I I will always give, you know, I, I love murals. I love stuff that's in the space out there, which is for everyone. But, you you know, if you're going to be that naked, mm. and I, I'm not just on a poster, and go, oh, it's the client's fault. It wasn't very good. You go, no, no. It's not mural, possible. We, you right, gotta, but you, 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 you really got to be good. We don't leave until it's done. Yeah. And if someone's not happy, we're back. 
Yeah. Really, like it's it's got to be perfect. Our whole five thousand square foot warehouse is about in Old Street is about making the process repeatable, spot on every time. So there's a lot of processes behind the scenes. Some that we use by you know on the on the Sistine Chapel by Da Vinci. There's some old classic sketching methods and processes. One's called pouncing that we use as part of our method. So what's that? Go on, explain. Oh, it. so basically, if you can imagine a, a stenciling the sketch. Yes. Of a wall. One of the big things, the first thing you do when you paint a mural is you have to sketch it, then you fill it in. So there are various ways of making a sketch. We used to, when we started, do things like projections at night, uh, freehand sketching, and then you adjust it. There's different ways of doing it. But there's a more robust method that we largely use now, which sign writers use all the time, which is pouncing. You basically print out the line drawing of the wall on four foot wide sheets of paper. You score the lines with holes. So when you hold those pieces of paper to a wall and spray where the scored lines are, oh, right, you okay. get the sketch on the wall behind Ooh. it. So that's a method that we use a lot, which is more robust because you can do it during the day and you can use it on scaffolding, for example, that you can't project through. Wow. So there's there's a whole bunch of... The really interesting. So, when it pouncing procedure. was used by Da Vinci, yeah, it's also used on like tableware and transfer of patterns. It, it's used in fabric and textiles. It's basically cutting holes on a piece of paper where you want the lines of your design to be, and then chalking through it onto another surface and redoing that again, and again, and again. Have, so you can repeat the pattern. Have people asked for Da Vinci when they come to? <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> Well, you, you know, one of the things, pieces of work we want to talk about was Vermeer, Girl right. with the Pearl Earring. That was a really good okay, one. Okay, right. Great. That you're so, so, he's so good. He I'm yes, segueing. He knows, know you we're getting into the work. And uh, I think the, the first brand we're going to talk to is certainly one that's close to our heart at, mm. at Talon and Grand Visual. Is, and and there's actually commonality across this table here because you did a stint at, at yeah. Specsavers as well. Yeah, with John um, Bertie. So, yeah, let's talk about the, the Specsavers campaign. And I think, you know, we've have to give a shout out to Bertie and John here and Richard James um as the as the creative team at Specsavers. And this I think this weirdly we're talking about murals, but this is definitely what what we would term a special build. Absolutely. Poster. Absolutely. And it's very atypical. It's not the kind of work that we normally do. Mm. Normally we just paint HBA, hand painted advertising. But we don't come from that outdoor advertising background. So when someone says, look, there's a really hard thing and not much time to do it, <laughs> the natural idea is, well, this is what we do, this is how you do it, this is how you'd use vinyl, here's the bits we'd paint, here's the install that we'd do. And so we've done a lot more mural plus over right. the years. The company's our organization's mission, it's not even the company, the organization's mission is to live in painted cities. Yeah. So if we only start Started doing these and there was no painting elements to it, it would start to feel not core to our business. But this does have some painting elements. So what we're looking at the one where the, the poster is um on its side in yeah. Leeds. Um how so that's painted? No, no, so no, no actually tell. mostly well so, so, so some of the, like, well, the, yeah. the wall. The wall obviously is painted, parts of the billboard to look rough are painted, and then the billboard misposted is vinyl. So there are right. some elements, but I'm not saying that we wouldn't have done the campaign if there were no paint elements to it, because if we don't, someone else I think probably will. And I want us to have the skill set to do difficult things quickly. And I think that, you know, part of the part of the reason with going with you guys on this one was absolutely the flexibility and craft that you can put into mm. doing this away from some of the the bigger, more traditional out-of-home media owners who mm. would not want to see one of their billboards misprinted. And right. there's a... Yeah, for, for for someone who for a, a company who's agile enough to see the art in something like this, mm. you're always going to from a from from our side of things, you're always going to go with someone who can think outside the box and do something a bit out of the ordinary for a special. The challenge of agile is one that I want us to be able to keep as we grow. So mm. we've had some really last minute things come in over the well since post COVID really lead times just shrunk a lot. Yeah. So lead times and budgets, lead times and budgets. Bye bye. So, <laughs> so sometimes there's you know, we do need to charge rush fees because we've got to work extra over weekends and mm. get extra people to mm. do the physical stuff needed to prepare to be mm -hmm. able to execute this. But it's really fun. So when I used to work in finance, one of the things that always seemed a bit strange was investors would have a spreadsheet. At the end of the year, they'd still have a spreadsheet. There'd be some more numbers, but what you've got to show for your effort is very much captured in a spreadsheet. There's something very tangible. When you go and see one of the sites, be it spec savers or hand-painted a mural, you stand in front of you like, that's really cool. I'm glad we were part of that. Mm -hmm. um, and that does happen a lot in spec savers. Exactly Did, so on the ladder one as well, was that yeah. the same thing, your involvement? Yeah, yeah. Like, just like... Well, so we put the billboard on the wall yes. and then built it. 
And then, you know, you can see, like, there are small paint elements, but they're not really important. It was just about getting that final effect. Yes. Just that everything, like, you can see the black just hidden behind the ladder that makes a void. Like, there's tiny little details, attentions to detail, that make it stand out. But as how was this done? Was this like a model maker then? or a, It's a real ladder. It's a real ladder. It's a real then, ladder. And then, and then how it's, was that? It's heat shrank brick vinyl essentially Onto. pulled to the ladder and it didn't work brilliantly the first time because the vinyl wouldn't stuck to the ladder rungs but wouldn't dent behind it and you really need to be able to see the outline of the ladder for it to work so we put wooden boards behind the ladders so the vinyl had more to stick behind it wow. so there was some and then fluff. and the pot with the is yeah that hanging there screwed in I mean, the thing is... Ladder braced at the, the base so it doesn't fall away, all I, of the above. I love hearing you talk about it because, like, I love the kind of, you know, detail and someone looking at it going, just not quite believable, so that when I do see it, either in the real world mm. or on socials or an awards jury or someone's portfolio, you go, fucking hell, I got it, and I just love it, and I want to see it again and again, and I think that's... These two are the epitome of the matchbox test. Yeah. Like, this is... Yeah. I get it straight away. I yeah. can read the headline. Yeah. It works on my social feed. Yeah. It's just... Right. Well, so the the matchbox test, if we've now come up with something, matchbox label test, the matchbox test, I like it, sounds great, works really well for social, but remember, you're first dealing with people in real space. Yeah, yeah, of course. So although it works better on social if it fits down to a matchbox label, yeah. if it's something just really amazing in person and has loads of detail that won't necessarily translate to digital, that doesn't make it a bad artwork. No. Um, Alexandra Taylor was telling us when she was on about having to pitch her posters and billboards from across the other side of the room holding up her, her sketch pad. Great idea. And it's because... Silk cut to Saatchi. Yeah. Yeah. Great Sa- idea. Saatchi would look at it and go, I get it from here, I get it, I'll get it when I'm on the street. And that's yeah. Just a, yeah. Let's, let's talk about the girl with the pearl earring or yeah. as I was thinking, the girl with the earbud. Yeah, absolutely that. Um, so that, th- This is a beautiful piece of work. I mean, it's <laughs> stunning in its execution. You know, it's so loyal to the original and yet oh, it's funny you say that i take a completely different view so okay, i good. love it what this look it's one of our walls at rich mix in east london it's an absolute monster of a wall it's brilliant to paint um it's a very large striking canvas and the idea here is really simple it's girl with a pearl earring with earbuds clear messaging times change really simple great clear creative now up close we weren't allowed to paint original photos of girl with a pearl earring because the photographs are owned under license so they sent photos of the original <laughs> off to vietnam at the time to have it repainted as a canvas and we then painted photographs of the canvas uh, so if you look at what we've painted it is slightly different and slightly wonky versus the original vermeer girl with the pearl earring is that that's it had why to be? Well, yeah because it, it, it because the rights that's held in the photographs of the original meant they couldn't use it Right. Without a license challenge, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay. So we painted from that copy. It still looks great yeah, yeah, yeah. to an, to the you know to the naked eye. But if you know the original, it's always going to look a little bit funny. And so that was the on idea. something like this, mm. in your in your in your roster of artists, mm. did you you know when you got the brief? Did you immediately go? I know who should do this. So. Th- that role is now held by members of our operations team and they did have a sense and they do have a sense. I try not to interfere with that because they do it so well, <laughs> but I would look at this, you know, with the years of experience and be like, here would be a great team for it. But I could, we could easily come up with, yeah, within yeah. our stable of artists, five or six teams that could do something like this brilliantly. And they work in teams. They work we, work, in- we always work in teams. That's why we're done in three to five days because right. we work together and the harmony's great. And each one has a specialty... Yeah, yeah. People have Technique different specialties. Or, so, so, the, so making that team is really important. Mm. It's part of what clients ask of us, which is why when they say they want to work with a specific artist, we need to understand if they're doing that because they want the artist's style, which is okay, or if they just there's a trust challenge or there's reassurance needed. Yeah. But you don't. It's okay for clients to have some influence in the artist team to feel reassured, but reassurance is the main thing. And the reassurance for us comes with the process and saying, look, here's the photos at the end of every day. This is how it's developing. Yeah. This is the plan. Mm. Yep. And you see it come to life and have ample opportunities to feedback while we're on site. It shouldn't be needed. Yeah. Speak now and forever hold your peace because we ain't painting it again. <laughs> you know, it's a bit, you know, when you're shooting film yeah. and you're saying, you must say if you're not happy or we yeah. do it again because once we've gone, yeah. we just have rushes. We don't, you know. But that's the sign-off process, right? So yeah. that's the same for any same. billboard, I suppose. You, as you, you're you having cl- clients coming down to have a look at the in-progress work, right? Uh, yes, sometimes in progress. More often finished piece. 
um, and uh, increasingly, like just just clients are very busy and they're running you know, nationwide, sometimes international out-of-home campaigns, they can't see every mural. They might not see the one in Edinburgh, but they might see Manchester, or they might not see the one in London, but they might see the one in Birmingham. So mm. that they come down and see and experience some in person. Oh, you know Great. what you just said? You know what you just said? Birmingham. Birmingham. Yeah. And on my screen, Peaky, Peaky Blinders. Blinders. It's like... <laughs> it's, it's like, like you least, know the I'm, I'm working for you. <laughs> well, I, get the, I got the brief. I fucking love it. So Peaky Blinders was a wonderful campaign. We painted it, obviously, in Birmingham, also in London, and, and on two of our walls, and it's fan art. So the art was created by fans, won an open competition, and then we painted fans' art large scale. That's always going to be a great way to engage fans in advance and to create something that, you know, creates so we, good stories. We of. had... Um, Emma Brooke Emma, yeah. on the show, who is the creative at BBC Creative, who came up with the concept of the clap, 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 clap. So did you ever meet Emma? No. Okay. I Let don't me. leave the office. This right. is the first time <laughs> I've been out of my basement <laughs> yeah. for years. Okay. It wasn't, during COVID, we moved into a bunker because it was cheap. For two years, we just moved the office. We didn't have natural light. So we were really working in a basement. And I think that mentality crept in. Blinkers on, head down, work as hard as you can, right. survive COVID, et cetera, et cetera. Et cetera. Siege mentality. Fine. Yeah. And I think I'm just coming out of that now. So you didn't even meet, the, I'm going to get his name wrong, Liam Pronivitzt. Uh, from, but in Birmingham, no. Didn't, he's, but the he, art, he's the art, the original artist. He's the fan, yeah, the fan, the fan artist. artist. So I think did, he did the Birmingham piece, not so the London one. Am I being thick? So um, I've asked this quite a few times a day in sure. my house. Um, am I thinking, should I be entering the dishwasher or should I be doing the one? <laughs> um, so does, does Liam come along... Has he painted that or have Global Street Art painted, we painted that, that, that on you his painted behalf? That on his but behalf. we can work with artists who have experience in painting large walls. Yeah, so so we work with Eric. Painted a wall. He's right. never painted a wall. So we did that for him. He turns up afterwards and there's a really lovely but the video. But the fan art was submitted through social, then yeah. your, you hand, but the, once you just, they decided who the winners were, yeah, you handed we would, the winners and you said, yeah. This Here is we the go. wall for go, you. Go do this. Yeah. Well, the, the, they were more or less designed to two specs. So mm -hmm. portrait and landscape. And then we received it and readjusted for size. Mm -hmm. But essentially, the fan art was presented to us as a fait accompli, go and paint this. Yeah. And it works really well. Yeah. 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 But it, So that is very... I suppose that and... I suppose every job's different, isn't it? Because the girl with the pearl earring, when you're just describing it, there's part of my brain was going, well, why don't you just take a photo of the original, retouch in the earbud... And off you go. But like you said, there's always going to be some, you know, this is this is advertising, isn't it? the world we live in, there's going to be some like, oh no, legally you can't do that, blah, blah, blah. Those are all factors. Yeah. It? But so this, relatively simple in, in effect. Good, good idea out. to engage a community that's really into the aesthetics of the mm. show. Yeah. yeah. I remember seeing this um, actually on London Underground and coming out and I'm, I'm obviously, I'm a fan of uh, Peaky's anyway, but it was one of those things where you, I literally was stopped in my track because it's so fucking big and simple and beautiful. Mm. And the fact that, you know, they had just a little, you know, logo of where it come from. But the, this campaign was, um, you know, I think when you see something without a logo or something that's clearly been created yeah. by someone who's not in a yeah. fucking studio in an yeah. agency. Yeah. Those are the things I think which have so much kind of, you know, glue around them. D d use different things to appeal to different audiences. We've painted some completely unbranded murals, one fairly recently for Pink Panthress, because she's got such a huge following. Of Who's Pink Panther? I musician. Okay, musician. Sorry. British Again. musician. Wow. Yeah. So but because she's old. got we such edit a... that one out. You old. <laughs> no. Okay, sing one of her songs then. Uh, oh, come on. This isn't a karaoke thing. Because <laughs> she's super popular amongst her audience. Who's her audience? Old, Younger, Gen old Z. white guys. Your kids. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. Oh, God, we've, we've really nosedived. Let's bring this one back. Because she's got such a, an engaged fan base, the, the mural doesn't need branding. Because as soon as it goes up, people are tweeting it. People are tweeting, that shows my age. But people are sharing it. It goes up on TikTok, et cetera, and other channels. So, okay. Sorry, yeah. TikTok? Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's move on to um, Valentine. Oh, Valentine, yes. wow. giant striking artwork, beautiful artwork, fun client to work with. Really enjoyed painting. So, is this massive wall? Could you describe the image for the listeners just for a minute? Uh, one giant human portrait filling a two hundred meter square wall with piercing blue eyes looking out at you, while the face is covered. The whole face and visage is covered in the Valentino logo. And was this a was this a photograph? That, it was a photo. So so then it's your fo there's photo real street art that's been You're painting. This is not street art, right? So the commercial versus the non commercial. Right. I choose my words a bit carefully. This okay. is HPA. It's hand painted advertising. Hand -painted advertising. Um, it, realism is the thing that we're asked to paint 
paint the most. Right, okay. Uh, and then there's probably like graphic styles. Yeah. And there's different styles and things that come up again and again, especially for high-end luxury fashion clients who are a big part of our uh, client base. There's a lot of realism. Was this sent to you as a photograph or a, sh- a still from a shoe or you asked to create this? How did this... One come around. So when a client books a wall with us, we have templates of our walls, right? In the same way that you know the dimensions of a 96 or a 48. Mm-hmm. So the artwork, quote unquote, needs to be dropped in to that template. And we have templates for all of our walls and their bumps and their, their, their features, where the windows are, obviously. So the client, between the client and us, I think there's, there's some back and forwards about where the branding was placed and what it looked like, etc. But it's agreed upon that here's the artwork as provided. This is the placement worked on together. Then away you go it's, it's, and just going back to that process of the of your operations um lead mm. selecting the right teams when you, when there's a a photo realist yeah. brief in that goes to yeah. us, the set team who are we have the best artists in the country proficient and i would probably yeah. say you know run for money in the world like some of the most amazing painters yeah. full time on staff so to be able to deliver something like this in a week is testament to their skill. It's a supposed week. to be my It's just incredible. That was a week, yeah. And then just how long incredible. does that wonderful piece of art stay up for? Well, uh, usually four month, uh, four weeks, sorry. So most of our bookings oh, are four God. weeks. Some are only two weeks, but they include the painting time. Mm. So if it takes three to five days and you're there for four weeks, you're fully live for, say, three and a half weeks or so. And then it may, depending on the deal with the wall, it may run a little bit over, but it, normally it would be painted over at the end of its run. And then we prepare the wall for the next one. I mean, it is sort of fish and chip paper on a you know a massive wall it's there and then it's gone it's so sad in a way i mean one of our one of my favorites ever was the dkny um mural in new york from years back you mm. know on the side of the building mm. and um i naively thought i think when we started doing this podcast thinking oh i'll go over there and revisit it. it's like no mate that's been painted over fucking years ago and you kind of think oh no these things get painted over mm. and of course they do I mean, that's it's so from that point of view, that is so beautiful, and yet it's been painted over, and it's now gone. Well, the records still exist digitally, yeah. but, but there comes what... a piece in accepting. And remember, I come from a breakdance background, so after your creative burst, your one minute, your thirty seconds, your whatever dancing, that expression is gone anyway. Mm-hmm. So I'm used to real temporality and creativity, and one of the things that we're so one of the big things that really sits behind what we're doing is I believe, we believe that inspiration leads to more inspiration. Yeah. Most creativity is undervalued. The history of human creativity and its explosion over the last 150 years, predominantly shown in objects on paper, is an amazing story that helps you understand the society you've come from, how we see the images we see and what we interpret. Appreciating that rich visual history from the last 150 years is something that we're obsessed with. I'm personally obsessed with. It's why we've built a museum in our basement, but it connects the human human craft that we do and happens on walls. I've just dropped a pen. Um, it wasn't a graphic sound effect. <laughs> um, the, the mic that, drop that, moment. That connects the artists and the skills that are applied to the walls outside with artists that we've maybe forgotten about. And that history of human creativity is a fundamentally beautiful story that's worth remembering and celebrating. Mm-hmm. For us, the advertising powers our ability to have that broader context and narrative and is also the justification for why we have to get the advertising stuff really right. Yeah, yeah. Because it's what we've built the business on but it's also the thing that allows us to venerate and remember other forms and aspects yeah, of human creativity that thing you said about and then it's gone i, I remember i read uh, i heard an interview of miles davis from years back where they said okay you know you're gonna play um kind of blue and you say no i've played it I, yeah. i've done it i put it on the record and they'd always people always say oh you, you know you play us the hits and he's yeah like, and i he because he's such a genius he's like no oh, fuck that i want to play something new now yeah and it was like Wow, that that's a proper artist, you know, that is, isn't it? How amazing for someone to be at a stage of their career where they have that as a luxury, yeah. where they don't have to play their hits, Ugh. where Hanson can turn up to the LA Bowl and not do And Umbop. not play Umbop. Yeah. Have you ever been asked to, to paint something that has had already been painted somewhere else? Uh, that, that was so successful we want it here. <laughs> Probably. I can't remember. Like, in, in that campaigns can be extended. Yeah. Or if artworks worked really well... Uh, then the client might ask to paint somewhere else as well. That has probably happened. I can't remember offhand. But it's also like you've got a picture on the screen right now of Marcus Rashford, which we painted on our massive hair and hounds wall in Manchester for Beats. Yeah. Um, Marcus Rashford has been painted a number of times because he is 
as a football celebrity and a great player is a position of icon and a campaigner. And a campaigner, and yeah. really it's amazing to see what's, cele- well, deserves the celebration. Every time I read anything about Marcus Rashford, I'm like, such an awesome dude. Yeah, mm. what a dude. Great to be able to paint. Can I, you brilliant, thank you for another brilliant link. This post, this um, sort of this mural, I'm, a, you know, transparency. I'm a massive United fan, so we were debating whether to have this in. We have to have Rashi in, um, but not just because that. It's a great piece. It is an. It was after his his mural was defaced after the Euros. Is that right? And is this kind of yeah, like an answer I, to it from Beats? Was that why they did it? I I would guess so remember? because the strap line to the mural is, I think, form is temporary. Yes, yeah. permanent. Class permanent. is permanent. As a person, yeah. And, and so, you know, it, when someone's form goes up or down in sports, it's what it is. Yeah. No, I was fascinated by it because it's like, I don't know, the whole thing around, like you say, Rashford being a, a, you know, not just a great footballer, but a great person and that horrible experience he had after the Euros and yet he's come back from it and he's, you know, he seems to be stronger, but it's still going on now. I mean, and this the, image is is per- the image is but, perfect as a as a in a response to what happened. He's got an yeah. inner piece listening to his music mm-hmm. while yeah. the hate goes on around him, and it's just a yeah. yeah, it's it's great. And say say for that, so like you know the the one done outside Old Trafford is by um, an artist called a- a- Axe. Thank you. I yeah, Axe is a, say that. a good friend. We work with him quite right. a lot on other projects. We work with him for Zuma so, for Peaky Blinders. So his image, we, that's like realism, yeah. isn't it? Whereas the the Rashi one, it's more like graphic or posterized. It's, and, not, it's not quite posterized, but it's, it's an illustration. But again, it's different. You would be saying you have that it, at Grand at Grand Visual, uh, Globe Street Art. You have that ability to use different. Yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, there's loads of styles. And we, we basically say, look, if you can see it, we can paint it. Yeah. And actually, sometimes if you can't see it, we can paint it anyway. So yeah. that's like UV and doing other so stuff. So say if I was a creative, I am a creative, um, and I'm working in an agency and I think, I want to get in early. I want to go and talk to Globe Street Art yeah. about an idea I've had for a mural. Because like, that's how Dan and I became really great mates. After a while, I'd just ring him up and go, look, can we just shoot the breeze and I've got a few ideas. Yeah. Do you have that? at the moment or not and is that a bad thing to promote because I love just talking to people who are the ones who are going to make it right um, or do you have to Fendi's wait? a really good example so one of the examples in this deck is for Fendi so we worked with them years ago they called us directly we were really busy on another project and I felt in retrospect my answer was probably a bit too fast but we said for what you're trying to achieve the budget isn't quite right there's challenges with time they said look you've been completely upfront with us Um, we'll see if we can adjust the budget. How would you approach this creatively? And because we had a really great working relationship with uh, Global Head of Communications, Christiana Monferidi at Fendi, who is brilliant and has so much vision and trusts artists, there was a really good back and forwards conversation about what the artwork could look like, how we would execute it. And that's worked. That worked really nicely. Sometimes, you know, we're late in the process of design and conversation, and that can cause some issues where there are things that are really easy, for example, to design digitally, large colour fades across a whole wall, which we can paint, but it takes a day longer to do it, Mm. two days to do it, without necessarily adding much impact to the mural. So if you add loads of texture or background to uh, uh, a detail to a background that doesn't really change much the impact of the mural, it can be helpful and healthy to have conversations with creatives who have choices in their designs about how to manage that. But if that's what the client insists on and that's what needs to be there because it's the same across, you know, the other outdoor formats, then yeah. so be it. But the, uh, I mean, then then you end up with we're moving on to, to the FIFA idea where, where you had some projection mapping over the top of the artwork yeah, yeah. Um, and a fairly unique piece of artwork as well in terms yeah. of not necessarily used in the same way across other media. So uh, the couple of brilliant projection mapping companies, Pixel Artworks, Immersive Me, I think this was working with Pixel Artworks at the time and we, you know, the accuracy with which the wall was painted allowed for the relatively straightforward laying over of the video loops that were projected on later. And the creative behind that is amazing. The loops, right? The the non-painted part of it really helped bring this one to life. And is that, okay. so is that a... Um... Is that a collaborative process that you go through while it's being painted or while it's in sketch or how does that work? Everything happens in advance, Mm -hmm. right? The creativity, creativity requires some amount of time 
for it to at least not be rushed. So the creatives behind the projection side will be in the studio working on the animations for weeks in advance. And then that will be signed off separately by the client on top of the mural design, mm-hmm. usually in advance. So you know and then gonna... they're on site and they tweak it based on what's happened in... Yeah, eight... like small adjustments in scale or position if mm-hmm. something needs, but rare that that would... Be when was this? When would this run? Uh, that was, a, I want to say, a couple of years ago. Yeah. My yeah. sense of time is always fuzzy at best. Can we... I, I want to go a little bit of pace because I don't want to miss stuff out. Mm. I want to go on to VW. Yeah. VW um, is a fun example. In yeah. seven cities across the UK. So it's... Just to give it a bit of context. So mm. it's a, it was a new... Um, I'm going to be sort of broad sweeping sort of strokes here, but it was a, an electronic VW and the headline was, it's not going to make a big impact which um, I really like as a concept and a line. You have to remember this is also in response to the big diesel scandal that VW had been exactly. through in the years prior. But, mm-hmm. the, but, but so. the really clever thing, well, addition, great line, but the clever thing was this use of air light paint. Is that yeah. right, Lee? Do you want to talk us through a little bit of that? Yeah, so there's a couple of paints that are mineral-based on the market that absorb different forms of pollution. Right. So they'll either take out, they'll either absorb directly CO2 or they'll break down volatile organic compounds, nitrous oxides, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, either fix them or just change them into something less obnoxious. Uh, <laughs> there are challenges in working with some of those paints. So we now have a new coating um, that we can apply over any of our murals painted with normal paints that touch dry really quickly. Right. Uh, so any of our paints can be pollution eating uh, any of our murals rather can be pollution eating it's a pretty simple thing to add on um and it comes actually originally from the banner industry it's just a coating that goes on banners but it can go on walls just as well and some clients you know ask 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 to have that added to the wall we're mm. as a company more than 100 percent carbon offset anyway because we always have well not always have been we have been for years now um because we you know that's the direction that we all must go in but i think something's funny about the volkswagen campaign is it did win a campaign and gold oh, lion we amazing. painted a bunch for it but we didn't enter and often don't we've we've by accident been won a, lo- a number of awards over the years where we haven't entered and sometimes didn't know they were being entered because we're often the final people executing at the end of the chain which is totally great i mean ultimately it means the stuff is winning awards and more people want to do it mm. there's a bit of a b to b challenge that folks don't necessarily know where we've been involved but still much rather be involved and not known than not involved as well as no i mean it's a great same problem multiple times i was going to ask and you know because that i was talking to uh, for my wife about this (laughs) i'm such an interesting person and i was saying oh there's this vw paris a mistake yeah it wasn't in paris no this was the other (laughs) night uh but i was when i when i found out this because i was thinking oh what what did it why did it win a gold at can Mm. because i was thinking decent headline but you know, I'm not sure it's, it's a gold worthy headline. And then when I found out the thing about the paint, I was like, "Oh fuck, that is cool." Did they come to you with that? Did you facilitate that for them, or did you go, "Guys, are you missing a trick?" It or is it kind of? A no, I think they came to us with that idea. And which, was it Adam and Eve, or was it that was Adam and Eve? It yeah. was Adam and Eve. Sorry, yeah, yeah. And through the um, talent grand visual. That's right. Because I think I've seen this work before, just around in. I don't know, in blogs and, you know, on people's sites. And you go, oh, yeah, it's quite a nice headline. I knew nothing about this until you spoke to me about it the other day, which is weird. So Why isn't that normal? The questions are really legitimate, right? Mm. People will ask about technology, and we've got a whole library of cool materials. Campaigns work really well when the message is fixed first and you find the material that fits it, and not when you've got a cool new tech <laughs> Which yeah. could actually be tech. We, we or it could do be a talk about that all to, the to time. With. Yeah. Fantastic. And it doesn't say that. And it doesn't fit. And so it doesn't fit the creative. So we've had examples of of both of those, but this one obviously it did. No, you're right. It's that, what's that the creative, the, the creative your very good quote, I always forget. <laughs> Technology for creative sake, not yeah. the other way around. Yeah. yeah. And I, that that's so anyway, it's it's so brilliant. I mean, I I love this campaign so much. It's beautifully rendered. Mm. But when you hear about that. And the use of paint. And I suppose the amount of paint you are putting on walls, yeah. it does make it very important for you to be, you know... Absolutely. Well, we, because of, it, of our community yeah. side of it. So when you take a can of spray paint to a wall, I mean, that was mostly liquid paint. When you take spray paint to a wall, you might come back with half a can. We have a paid recycling for that, but it seems such a waste. Yeah, so yeah. we give away three-quarter, half-full cans of paint that come back to our artist community to go out and help paint 
housing estates and mm-hmm. projects like that. So it's like pret a manger give away their sandwiches. You give away your... Yeah, essentially. <laughs> if, that, if that helps you get it. Yeah, exactly that. But the Brilliant. remember what I said before about that imbalance, that for five minutes of our effort, an artist could paint something for a day that would look good for three years. Mm. Now imagine that a natural waste product of this very odd niche of outdoor advertising gives away a lot of free paint to artists that are going out to paint for fun on weekends. Right. That all of a sudden becomes a really powerful tool, literally for social change. Yeah, you're because we're in housing creativity. Yeah, yeah. We yeah. painted 86 murals in housing estates within the first three months of this year. Housing estates and uh, community murals, including a lot in housing estates, in the first three months of this year, which were more than we did HPA. Yeah. Right. So we just support the community stuff an awful lot, which is a nice add-on yeah, yeah. that our clients exactly. know happens at the end of it, mm. but it's not why they book us. It's a great yeah. use, isn't it? Um, we're going to move on to a glass of Baileys. Now. Yeah. Um, uh, and again, I... This was turning Halloween into Halloweens, yeah. which I was reading about um, last night. Brilliant, actually. I, I didn't even know anything about it, and then I saw it, and I got more and more into it. But then, again, your part was, well, you, you know, you, you tell us, but there was this UV yeah. paint, right? Is yeah. that right? We didn't design it. We just painted the murals. Quite okay. unquote, just painted the murals. Great client idea, <laughs> great client creative handed to us. We provided the walls. We painted the artwork. We added the UV on top. We helped with the design so the client could visualize what it would look like under UV at night and without UV during the day. I think it got nominated recently for a campaign award. I don't know if it won. It won something. I, think, I was reading. Right. Yeah. It's, um, I think it's been nominated for a Clear Channel. As, yeah. Channel there's a few award. things that we've have come up it's in a Clear Channel cool. thing that we've it's pretty cool so you can see it then, e- like. even if we're a small part of a nationwide campaign I think it's quite telling that often it's the image of the mural that is used to submit for the award and that's where we often see well, ma- something we've done match, by accident matchbox stamp isn't it it's that it's that kind of someone has gone to the care and effort to ruddy paint that <laughs> No, I'm trying not to swear <laughs> doesn't ruddy. matter you can we've swear. got the explicit badge already oh really he yeah. fucking swears all the time. Oh, I'm amazed we've got this like an industry outdoor podcast where we just well, Effin and Jeff in. Where no, we just swear all the time. Yeah. yeah, it's like a therapy. Very Brief. funny. Um, um, so uh, we kind of covered some projection on top of murals. We've kind yeah. of covered a bit of the special build stuff up front with um, with spec savers and yeah. our UV paint. Now we've got. We're looking at Glenfiddich. Yeah, we, we're um, covering a lot of the special, the special case stuff, which yeah. is great. But we paint, I don't know, 250, 300 things a year. And the vast majority don't have the, the special stuff. stuff. Yeah. I love the special stuff, but it is only partly representative of what we do. The Glenfiddich one, to date, we've only done this one once. And it's amazing. It's a 2D extension of a deer's antlers off the wall. So the antlers just come off the wall. Anything that like behind the billboard, breaks the billboard, like Marmite coming, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, There's yeah. loads of campaigns that people know recently. Those things that are just a little bit different, that essence of special that break the border of the space, get carried really well on social. They look really cool. And this was such good artwork, passes the Matchbox label test. You know, it works really well. Short, but it's also How did clever you do look. the antlers? They are, essentially, they're an aluminium build. It's right. straight aluminium. The engineering calcs behind them meant that the... There was as much antler below the wall, fixed to the wall, as pokes up above the wall. Always comes with engineer's calcs, and then they were bolted in and then removed Um, at the end. And I think as you you scale and the number of walls you paint scales every year, the ability to add something different, like a... 2D extension or yeah. UV paint or yeah. a projection mapping yeah. just helps that story, as you said, it, it, it gives you a bit more social currency. It really there, does, yeah. but I love the fact that as we change each year, it, you know, there's a challenge for any campaign marketer because of all of the units of, all of the work that comes in to us is special. Everything is slightly different, mm-hmm. but there are common components that come through the projects. The wall, the painting, the content that comes from it, plus or minus the design as well, but the narrative story around it. Right now, that many of our projects are really impressive in person with an extension on social media. Increasingly, we see inquiries. We had a one for Google that we might talk about soon, where it's more content or more narrative, and the wall is still important, but 
a smaller part of the overall campaign. Right. So the one that we've just done recently for Google Arts and Culture was to Which paint one is it? Uh, that one. Yeah. Sorry, so it's not you'll me. see some gifts on your screen right now. But essentially, we work with Tristan Eaton in LA, Camille Wallala in London, brilliant artists, and Edgar Sena, Sena in Mexico City. We painted murals designed by those artists and then launched by a QR code uh, at the location. The geospatial, it's the tech is called geospatial creator that plugs into Adobe Aero. You can basically, it launches an AR experience at the wall that is sensitive to the whole location around it. So, for example, if a ball came off the wall and rolled down the street, it would roll correctly down the street and turn left where the turning is, yeah. i.e. It, it understands the whole space around you. You're placing AR in the space, not just off the wall. So that was a global first. It just got announced at Google's IO developer conference on May 10th. It's just been released, but it was a really interesting case study. Essentially, for people in outdoor advertising, what you can imagine is it turns any mural into a deep screen on your phone. So for that deep screen or digital experience, you can get that off your phone on any mural. I don't necessarily think it's going to be the most in-demand thing that people ask for because it is an experience that requires your phone, which is always an element of friction. But the process to load that experience was pretty frictionless. Mm. And I think that's the most important thing for for outdoor. It's something that we've talked about a lot in the past. Is you know, we're we're interrupting people's everyday lives with a right. piece of paid for advertising. Yes. In order for them to in order for them to get their phone stop, get their phone out, interact. You're 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 asking them to do something and yeah. you're demanding and that they will be demanding a reward for that process. And here you're going to see something more than just the wall. You're going to yeah, do something else. You've this seen. had a very much had a tech reward. I question what the reward would be normally and whether most people would even get out their phone. I think at first outdoor is just a demand for attention. And that's it. it, it the, the value, the value are, exchange is there. So it, certain brands doing it really well. We've just done something for um, Shake Shack in the US that was mm. a kind of a scavenger hunt using digital out of home sites and mm. the reward there they've just launched a white truffle burger um and it was a truffle hunt around new york and if you cool. found the truffle if you found yeah. the truffle you'd win a two thousand dollar truffle but most people won some truffle fries or yeah, a drink to go with their meal or something yeah and i mean i really like that because that's such an obvious value exchange yeah for a lot of the work that is done in outdoor, that exchange is questionable at best. Yeah. I've sat in a room. I made you laugh is enough, is it? Or that would be or great. Just make or you like entertained you. Yeah. And I think as close as advertising can get to art by skill and scale, there is hopefully some reward seeing it. Yeah. I, um, <clears throat> excuse me, I don't know whether this is something we are going to talk about or not, Lee, so just shout me down the one we're looking at yeah we can yeah, so on screen right now you've got a project that we painted for Zippo um, five or six years ago it's about 17 and a half thousand square meters on a floor in Hackneywick that became a <laughs> development site where it says in very large letters across the building site create 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 the uh, each of those letters is the size of a seven story building on its side it's massive <laughs> it used six tons of paint and up to a team of 30 people just literally painting the, oh the ground oh my god the story story is much longer than wilder than that um which I, the day i won't get into it it doesn't really matter but the, there was a really interesting narrative with the creative so you've got this temporary giant artwork on the floor that's supposed to last a week or two and then you've got the zippo lighter with a lifetime guarantee you've got the biggest canvas and the smallest canvas you've got impermanent and permanent. So you can tell that that was a campaign that was really developed by a PR company because it had a really strong narrative from end to end. Mm, yeah. And the mm. content around it was the output. It's not something you could see it in person if you looked over the space, but you wouldn't know it was associated with Zippo. But the fact that it was filmed by satellite from space by NASA yeah. and obviously drones as well yeah. made this amazing artwork and narrative and it did brilliantly online. Um yeah, it reminds me of the. Um, the oh, this was Ben. Chill boards. Did you ever? Did you see the chill boards? Do you remember the chill boards one yeah, from the can? Is, yeah. They painted on the roofs of buildings. Oh, that yeah, 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 yeah. It's really Just nice. Those. It's really nice. Um, uh, we um we, we are pushing up on time, so there's probably. Yeah, we we. I mean, honestly, it's been we could talk. <laughs> I'm so pleased you talk quickly, Lee, because it's allowed us to really crunch in a shitloads of um, content. Have I got time for another couple of questions, or should we just yeah, go? Yeah, you've got you've got time for another couple. Um, of all the stuff you've done, yes, not just at GSA, but wherever you know, has there 
one you're most proud of and there's one that's most outrageous or hardest, you know, because, or, or, you know, you must have so many memories uh, of things you've been associated with. Is there is there one you like the most? Uh, there's a few that stand out, <clears throat> right? So I think pride is the most dangerous emotion. It's really conflicted. So I kind of don't like talking about it or acting with pride. I'm proud of the achievements of my team, but for us and me, I think it's grateful. So there are things that I'm most grateful that we've had a chance to be part of. And they were typically things like EasyJet and Fendi, where someone took a bit of a risk on us and mm. our creativity that allowed us to live up to that and reach a, a slightly higher level in the career and push something forwards. Every time a client comes with us with a challenge like that, I think it it delivers that. And that general sense of wonder for being pushed for something new hasn't gone away. So I'm sort of really, I guess, grateful for that one. Mm -hmm. um, the, one of the offshoot programs that we have is uh, called Art for Estates. We've organised over 200 murals in housing estates, estates across London over 10 years. We made a video of it recently and there's just a lady at the end who just says, it's nice to have something different because we painted in a housing estate and I well up every time I see yeah, that because yeah, yeah. it doesn't need to be any more complicated than that. Yeah. If we Look, if we've got really happy clients and I've got a happy team doing really good work that also allows them to have mastery of what they're doing, autonomy internally, so we're not breathing down our team's neck, and purpose. We're really, really lucky within Outdoor that ingrained in this company a sense of purpose with a mission to live in painted cities was baked in before we knew we were an outdoor company. Mm. So I'm really grateful for some early decisions that were possibly a bit accidental that have allowed us to get this far yeah. with a runway to go further. And do you personally have, I know at the top of the show or when we were outside, I can't remember, do you have a personal favourite mural or a billboard piece of out of home that you like the most? Because we always ask it every guest. Oh, it's, it's such a difficult <laughs> question. But what I mentioned before stands. Inspiration leads to inspiration. So there are many things that I'm inspired by, many artists on a fairly regular basis. And our quote unquote gallery slash museum that's in the office is a catch all net for things that have inspired us that have been produced over the last 150 years. I mean, look, right now, the easy answer is what we're painting for Diablo with rapport is absolutely amazing. It's in three countries. So it's going live in Stockholm, Berlin and London with projection mapping over the top. We're having a great time doing it and it looks amazing. Right. But any specific piece is like, you know, the whole journey is, you know, I'm so lucky to bloody be here, mm. not just literally with you guys here today being asked questions about that presume I've got any expertise when really, <laughs> when I walked in the building, I got the wrong Dan. Do you see that? <laughs> and, and they were like, who's this guy? And I thought I was just in the wrong place. But somehow 10 years later, we're not only still here, but have an amazing team that I think has got the power to do without door and re producing really good out-of-home advertising work that also enables us to do so much community stuff, so many other things, that that inspiration loop is really alive and well. That yeah. by doing this stuff and making our clients happy, it allows us to continue to do more of it, well, it in the team as well. It, it sort of feels, I like the way you've said that, because it, it feels like you've, you're sort of from a, it's from the community. Mm. You know, so in a way, if you can pay it back and involve them, that's, that must be the best feeling rather than sometimes with advertisers, they have to put them into little silos and go, oh, let's now do yeah. something nice for people. So I think that's a lovely, a lovely sort of way to, to end. Well, I, there's one more future focus question. You know, the, cool. The, we talked about how the, how technology layers and technique layers can go over the top of murals and so and kind of, we've seen a yeah. number of examples of that today, but yeah. Where else to for for global street art? Where where next? What's the what's the what other streets? What other buildings? Do is it territory based? You know, is it is it the US? Is it Australia? Is it is it actual global domination for you? Well, you it, can't call a where, where can't company <laughs> global street art and just paint in the UK, right? No, so we, we are doing more international stuff. Yeah, you've got a anyway. you've got an office in the United Arab Emirates, haven't you? No, we don't, but we've painted out there. Right, okay. We do have one of our team works remotely in. Uh, Lithuania and then Birmingham. It's not quite a foreign country. But, uh, <laughs> but no, I mean, look, there, there is ambition to do more and to grow it. Certainly, there are some parts of the strategy that we're still working on, to be frank. There is clearly opportunities for growth within hand-painted advertising within the UK and Europe and the world. But there are also opportunities for how to combine wall plus artist plus content plus other bits and pieces in different ways mm. to produce different ways of reaching 
and entertaining audiences. Um, we have our London Mural Festival, which we produced the first time during COVID during 2020, that painted, worked with 200 artists in 75 different sites in 13 London boroughs. When's every the next four one? Years. That comes back next year. So there's It'll going to be, be some there. gearing up. Dan, that. will you let me come down to that one? It's it's yeah, everywhere. You, that. You, 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 it's <laughs> it's everywhere. Like there's still lots of murals that. You buy your own tube pass then. <laughs> Uh. <laughs> so like, it always it's still into no, this, I love that. I love it. We've we've taken this long to descend into <laughs> into it. We've done really really well. Um, th there's lots of really cool things. I think one of the challenges is we don't have much visibility on what's coming in. No one does in outdoor, mm -hmm. so we are somewhat at the mercy of macro trends. Even though they may be interested uh, interest in our specific niche of advertising, um, it goes up, it goes down. I think I. The easiest way to, 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 and this is going to sound really cryptic and probably just quite weird, but I'm going to go with it anyway. So looking forwards more, weirdly, lately, we've actually probably started looking back more. So understanding what inspires people and, like I mentioned before, a history of human creativity and really collecting that as a tool to be able to work with artists differently. And you know, it's a US, like how many companies have a museum in the basement? That's got to be a USP. What you do with it, we're still trying to figure that one out. Out, yeah. But there's something in it that I believe that there is a seed that has been sort of growing that will blossom into something over time, but it's difficult to say exactly what that will look like. But look, there are growth plans and I think we've got a good shot uh, 10 years, X years from now being a much, much bigger organisation than we are. But I'm not interested in doing that just for the sake of it. If it helps us realise our mission to live in pen painted cities and ultimately to inspire mural painting in other people. We have set targets around inspiration now. Yeah. So that's a really exciting trajectory. Yeah, I think with your mission, the, the opportunity is there when, you know, cities all around, the, new cities popping up all around the world. You've Absolutely. Got, so you, you, you've definitely got a, a, a ready-made canvas ready to go for it to to push your creativity on. So I think it's, you know, mm. very exciting times for you and congratulations on everything you've done so far. Thank you so much for letting me be here. Well, thanks. And it's been a total pleasure and it's just an education. I mean, I, I could go on and on, probably will. Um, <laughs> do a part two at some point. But Lee, thank you so much again. Yeah, thank you. In. Cheers, guys. Oh, I'm exhausted. I'm exhausted. Fuck, you know, that was it, good. I think I'm going to have to listen back to that one myself a few times. Yeah. He does talk quickly, but yeah. it's, and it's, I think there are a load of little snippets in there that I would oh, yeah. use in my own presentations. I know, yeah, I might have to pause at certain like words or expressions and just try and claim for my own, but it was a kind of tour de force of, well, not just of his history, but his company and murals. And it was brilliant. I mean, I, I don't know whether I'm I, jealous. Yeah, a little bit. I, don't I like know. The, the good work side of things. Like, I wish I could. You know, yeah, but I'm sure from, he's buried. From setting up <laughs> Grand Visual 18 years ago with Neil, I mean, I wish we'd, I mean, we'd done our fair share of charity work, don't get me wrong, but, you know, we don't have pixels that we can recycle and give to the poor. It's interesting. Isn't it? <laughs> it's like, pixels oh, wish, for the poor? Yeah. Sounds like a can poor. film. There you go, pixels for the poor. And the gold. <laughs> yeah. No, he, he was great. And he didn't, he just, um, he's incredibly affable, isn't he? You know, I can see why he's so successful. Um so pretty young as well he, look, he looks in good shape so um, thank you Lee if yeah. you're listening to this very and, um, very good very good show I hope you all enjoyed it and please uh, let us know um, if we've missed any murals or you want to have more details or send stuff uh, in if you see a mural out there snap it and send it yeah so no great um, so until next week socials don't forget Oh, yeah. Follow us. Follow us. Or don't. Please. Yeah, or if you don't like us, don't. <laughs> uh, big thank you to our sponsor, Talon. Um, uh, Soho very Radio. Big, and Soho Radio here. Um, but very big advocates of our work. And so we're, we're, we're delighted to have you on board as our, as, our, as our key sponsors. And thank you again, Lee, and um, everyone at um, GSA for the, you know, the contribution today and for all your work. So hopefully we'll, we'll talk to them again soon. Yeah, Ben, we've got to give a shout out to Ben because Ben's always sending us stuff in as well. So Thanks, big Ben. Shout out to Ben. Ben Ship Fishlock. Ben Fishlock. <laughs> yes. I'm leaving that bit in as well. <laughs> Sorry, Ben. I'm, I'm, I'm very hungover from the weekend still.